What is learning? Hello, YouTube. This is Dr. David Maslach talking to you about reciprocity.com. It is a sharing economy proofreading software that I'm trying to build. I wanted to talk to you today about what is learning. What does it mean to learn? Uh, we often hear this. Uh, this we often hear this when we don't necessarily know what that means. There's a lot of different topics in this. I myself, so I'm I'm a professor of innovation strategy and entrepreneurship at a large state institution in Florida, and I study how organizations learn over time, and this idea of learning. We have struggled with this for a long, long time. So the examples I'm going to be talking about is actually more directed towards organizations, but it does apply the the analogy we too often use in organizations actually comes from sort of individual based learning when we think about individuals. So this is the first thing that we should think about when we talk about learning before I get into the definition of learning is that we want to acknowledge that there's multiple, many different levels of analysis. And what that means is that you can look at it from the individual perspective. You can look at how individuals are learning over time. You can also look at how organizations learn over time. And then there's another um, there's another large set of literatures. Like there's a, a lot of research about how teams learn over time. There's all sorts of things. So there's all sorts of different ways to understand learning and different um, levels of analysis to understand learning. And they all have their own problems and different understandings. Oh, and the, the other thing that we can look at too, I forgot to mention this, is not only individuals learn over time, but animals, for example, will learn. Um, there is a whole very large literature on machine learning, and this is where um, computer scientists, for example, and engineers, they borrow from what we understand about individuals and how they learn. And they try to model that in machine learning with it using mathematics. And um, some of the stuff actually, so some of the stuff that they're doing, machine learning it actually applies to some of the, the research that we do in uh, organizations and how we understand how organizations sort of reinforce uh, different, uh, how they, they reinforce different um, actions and, and things like that. Um, and there's a huge literature in that area. So um, I wanted to also point out that this is very well studied and it's been studying, we've been studying this, oh, probably, probably over an, about a hundred years now, I believe. I think going back to about Skinner that was really looking at how um, in psychology and how how organize or how individuals learn, but in terms of organizations, how we understand how they learn, it's a probably about a 30 year old literature at this point that we've understood or started thinking about organizations. So, um, what does learning mean? What does what does that mean? And I'm going to talk about in, in in particular to organizations, right? So, learning means that an organization improves with experience. So, this does apply to individuals again. So that means that individuals will learn um, with experience or learn from experience that they do get better over time. Um, so what that does mean is, or what's happening, the reason why they are learning from experience or they're, they're improving from experience is that they are replicating actions that lead to success and then they are exterminating or removing actions that lead to failure over time. So as you accumulate experience, you're going to replicate more successful actions and you're going to remove um, failed actions or how we perceive them as failed actions over time. And the way that organizations do this is that they focus on particular routines in the organization that are not necessarily working out. Um, so they might remove those. There might be standard operating procedures. This might be stuff that's written down in, in, in a document, for example. They might remove the ones that are not working or improve the ones that are currently working very, very well and keep adding to them um, in terms of Individuals, we might, we do do this. Um, so for example, as you're learning as an individual and you, as a child, for example, 
you will look around your surroundings and you'll try something, you'll interact with your surroundings, and somebody might tell you, your parent might tell you that, well, this thing that you're working on is called this, um, or that you're playing with is called this, and you'll think about it and you'll start to acknowledge that that particular thing is 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 what it what it's called and it takes a long time it takes a lot of experience of sort of teasing apart what particular phenomenon relates to what if you think about just if somebody gives you a red box for example as a child and you say that that's a box you don't necessarily know that the redness is a box or that the box is a box or um, just presenting somebody is a box. You have to figure that out as a child, and the way that you do that is through experiences. As you get more boxes of different colors, of different shapes, and um, you're presented in different ways and in different contexts, that you start realizing what a, what a box is, right, as a child. So that, that is important to understand. You start um, getting this sort of reinforcement over time. It's very, very tricky for a child to understand that, but they do learn it because we have processing information, processing capabilities in your ba uh, brain. And this leads to the discussion of understanding. So this is the learning from experience and learning to replicate excess, uh, success or definition of learning. This is um, how we get to the understanding of what is a learning curve. So a learning curve is just simply a relationship between cumulative experience and the performance that you uh, obtain from that experience. So in organizations, we've looked at how, how um, airlines, for example, improve or shipbuilding improves over time. And they look at number of units or the cost of the unit that is being produced and the, and the cost of ships, how uh, expensive it is to produce at each unit that is produced over time. And we see this sort of relationship that the cost decreases relatively steadily as you produce more and more of whatever you're producing. And not only cost, but the, um, that, that, that the failure rate or the problems that they experience does decrease over time. And uh, when we might often hear this term that something has a steep learning curve or has a very steep learning curve, what that means is you're looking at this curve and you can improve very, very quickly. It's kind of different than what we sort of uh, think about with that is that you're improving very quickly with each additional level of experience or each different uh, amount of experience that you accumulate, that it goes very quickly. Um, as you get more experience, you rapidly improve. And actually, it, it's different. So this is why I'm saying it's different than we most of us understand what a steep learning curve is. Um, actually, the sort of the, the idea that it's really hard to do something, that is more of actually a flat learning curve. You're not improving very quickly from experience and you actually have this very flat uh, learning curve over time. So the other thing that there's another definition of learning that is uh, that that is important. So that that the first definition is thinking in terms of outcomes and how outcomes improve. So the thing that you're working on actually improves over time. The other way to think about it is in terms of the pro process or process of learning over time, and that is where we think about how we gather experience, we codify that experience into knowledge, or we might acquire, we might scan for experience, we might acquire that experience, codify it in some sort of way, and then use that to improve your experience. It might be that, and, and the reason why we might look at, at the process of learning, particularly within organizations, is because there's a lot of circumstances where learning doesn't actually result in any sort of improvement. You don't necessarily have to have improvement to learn because you just might not do something, for example. You might skip a certain procedure. There's all sorts of different reasons why you might not improve over time, and it's much easier to understand the sort of processes or the microprocesses within an organization or within an individual than it is to sort of look at this improvement over time. 
Um, the last way that you can think about learning, and there might be other ways, you, if, there's, if there's experts in this area that want to actually comment, please do. I'm learning myself. So there might be another um, way that you can learn uh, over time is that what you look at is the transformation of ideas and how these ideas transform and you're looking at essentially the knowledge um, transformation over time. So you're focusing on the fundamental unit of the idea rather than any particular process of the organization or individual or looking at the outcomes. So you're looking at the particular idea, how they're changing. Maybe you have a, a very dramatic change in how you're understanding the world, for example, that you have sort of uh, one way of understanding the world. You have a dramatic change in understanding the world in another way. And that in itself uh, might not re result in any sort of performance improvement and might not change any processes, but you see the world completely differently. And those ideas are um, sort of trans they transformed in your mind or in the organization's mind. Maybe you're having a discussion in a team, for example, in an organization, and the team sort of views the world all of a sudden much differently. I see that in the classroom all the time, that I see just people's minds there not doing anything different. There's nothing that's improved uh, or changed, but just their mind shift changes uh, and they have a different view of the world. And that's really cool to see in the classroom. And it, it is something that, that uh, it, it's definitely I treasure over time. And I do get a couple of students every single year that go through this process. So um, if there's anything else I'm missing, make sure that you do comment on this. I'm, I'm learning myself about this. I've been only learning uh, in this area probably about uh, 10, 15 years now. So I still have more to go. I'm still learning the area. And there, there's so much more to do in this area. So if you like these YouTube videos, make you sure that you do subscribe. It do, definitely does help out. Uh, those of you who already subscribe, you are so cool. You're amazing. And uh, for those of you who want to help out with the reciprocity project that I'm doing, is I'm trying to create a uh, an online sharing economy proofreading application where you can interact. You can hopefully get free proofreading if you want to and earn uh, learn how to proofread over time as well as you can pay for that if you want in in fact probably that's the easiest way to get started on that you pay for credits and then you start learning or, or you'll you'll start um, understanding that it's pretty easy to inter interact there and the reason I'm doing this and creating this uh, one of the motives is to understand how organizations actually do work and um, a, I'm, I'm starting up my own um, sort of side thing. This is a, this is a, a startup that's uh, that that I'm that I'm growing, so I can have some lessons to share with uh, as students, as well as B. I'm using this for research. It's a really cool thing that's happening within uh, the software community that I think is incredibly important for the scientific community, and that is A/B testing which we can't do right now in traditional organizations. So having a software platform is it's awesome, right? So with that, uh, thank you so much. Have a good day and take care. Bye.